So really quickly, this is actually video number two in a playlist of beginner Python cybersecurity projects. If you want to know more about the tools that I'm using here, such as Visual Studio Code, I recommend that you go back and watch the previous video on a Python MMAP port scanner. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So how do we create a Python Caesar cipher? Well, if you're looking for a project to get into cybersecurity. Cybersecurity, to be exact. This is pretty much a perfect start. So to get started, we need to open Visual Studio Code. We need to go File, New File, and click Python. So it automatically saves with the .py. We'll save it anyway. File, Save As. Save it to your desktop, wherever you want. And we'll call it python-cipher.py. That .py extension, obviously, saving it as a Python file. Then, as always, we're going to take our whole script and copy and paste it in so you don't have to painfully watch me type the whole thing. Is someone made earlier? We're going to comment it all out and then uncomment it block by block, explaining it as we go. So I think we should pause there and just before we explain the code, we should actually explain what a Caesar cipher is. Basically, a Caesar cipher is a term used within cryptography for an encryption technique. It was actually invented by Julius Caesar himself to send his private messages. Effectively, what he's doing is he's substituting each plain text layer for a cipher text layer. Basically, the plain text version of B would become Y, the plain text version of D would become A. And obviously, with modern computing, this isn't going to stand up in an encryption world. But you have to remember, back in the Roman times, only the really wealthy could read and write. So this probably did stand up for a fair amount of time. So starting with line one, import string, you're probably thinking, why do I need to import string? Doesn't Python already have the functionality to work with strings? Well, yes and no. It has very basic functionality to work with strings. The additional string library, and by importing it, gives us the opportunity to manipulate and kind of contort the way we work with strings on a more complex level, which is what we need if we're going to be doing this cipher. So the first function we're going to look at starts there on line 3 and it's the Caesar encrypt function. It's made up of two variables that we pass in and it's the message and the key. The message is basically the message that we want to encrypt and the key is the number of the positions to shift down the alphabet to create the encrypted message. This function basically creates a translation table for the cipher and then you can use the translate method there on line 8 to encrypt the message. It then takes that message and shifts each individual character three to the left down the alphabet to get your encrypted message. Just before we jump onto that second function, let me know down in the comments if you'd rather I went through this code line by line as opposed to block by block. Every time I start to explain a piece of code or a script line by line or I start to get really into the weeds with a piece of technology, my audience retention does seem to half within the first 30 seconds. So that's an indication to me that people prefer more of a light-hearted, just high-level approach. But if there are people out there that do want me to explain it line by line, I do enjoy making those types of videos so I could make some of those as well. So jumping onto that second function, which is the Caesar decrypt, we need the encrypted message and we need the key again. So that encrypted message is a variable that we've set in the first function and we pass that in. We're also again passing that key in. So the function will create again a translation table for the cipher and it'll use that translation method to decrypt the message, but in reverse this time. So it's a pretty much doing the same as the first function, but in reverse. And it's going to return the decrypted message as a result. And move on to the two variables that we've used in both of the above functions. So we've got message, which is a string, and the string of text is going to be encrypted and it's subscribed to WJ Pierce. We've then got the second variable, which is key, and that's an integer, and that's three, and that's how many letters we want to shift down the alphabet to create that encrypted message. We're almost ready to run that script. All we need to do now is look at lines 24 to 28, and it's really simple, two blocks of code here. We're setting a variable called encrypted message. It then calls the Caesar encrypt function with the message and key variables as arguments. It assigns the returned value, which is the encrypted message, to the encrypted message variable, and then prints a string with the encrypted message interloped into it using string formatting. Jumping on down to our bash terminal, we hit ls and we can see that we've got the python cyberpy project. So we run that by typing python, then the name of the script, and you can see that we've got encrypted message, which is subscribed to WJ Pierce, but every single letter has been shifted down three. And then we've got the decrypted message, which is subscribed to WJ Pierce. There we have it, a very, very basic intro into cryptography and Python and how we can use the two together to improve our cybersecurity skills. If you're still around, thank you very much for watching. I presume you're really into Python if you've made it this far or you're one of my friends trying to help out the channel. And I also appreciate that as well. Okay, bye-bye.